Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a husband and wife who longed for a child of their own. They hoped and prayed, but no child came. At the back of the house, they had a small window from which they could see a garden that was surrounded by a high wall. It was one of the most beautiful gardens in all the land. But it belonged to a sorceress named Madame Gothel. No one ever dared go into the garden for fear of her great power. But the woman could admire it from her window. She loved the rose bed, the lettuce patch, the peach trees. But most of all, she loved the rampion, a vegetable that looked almost like white carrots, complete with green grassy tops. It was also called Rapunzel. This rampion was unlike any the woman had ever seen, and with each day, her desire for the vegetable grew. All she could think of was to have some of it to eat. And each day that she could not have any, she grew more and more miserable. Her husband became worried and asked, Dear wife, what troubles you? Oh, husband, she replied, if I cannot have some of that rampion from the garden behind our house, I shall never be happy again. Being a loving husband as he was, the man could not bear to see his wife so sad. He told himself, Make her happy above all else. Let it cost you what it will. And so, when dusk fell, he snuck over the wall and into the garden of the Enchantress. The man picked a handful of the rampion and quickly returned home. In the morning, his wife was overjoyed. She ate it all up. And when there was none left, the woman was sorrowful once again. But this time, she longed for it three times more. She told her husband, I must have it. I cannot bear another minute without it. Her husband knew he must go back into the garden and get her as much as he could. After dark, he once again snuck over the wall and began to pick the rampion. But as soon as he grabbed the first handful, a dark shadow fell over him. The man looked up and saw the sorceress, Gothel, standing over him. How dare you come into my garden and steal my rampion? You shall pay, she screamed. The man gripped the rampion with all the strength he had in his body. Madame, I do admit I am a thief. It is wrong to take from your garden, but please, I beg you, show mercy. My wife can see your garden from a small window in our house and she longs for your rampion. She felt she could not go on without having some. I, I, I could not bear to see her so sad. Gothel's anger softened at this. If this is the truth, she said, then take with you all you can carry, but on one condition. You will give me the child you and your wife will bring into the world. I shall care for it like a mother. The man was scared and consented right away. And nine months later, they welcomed a baby girl. Gothel appeared at once, named the child Rapunzel and left with her. Rapunzel grew up a kind and beautiful girl. On the day of her twelfth birthday... Gothel locked Rapunzel in a tower which was surrounded by a thick forest. The tower had no door nor any stairs. It had only a small window at the very top. When the sorceress wanted to go inside, she would stand at the bottom of the tower and yell, Rapunzel! Rapunzel! Let down your hair! Rapunzel had magnificent golden hair as thick as a tree trunk, as soft as a puppy's fur, and as long as twenty stories high. When Rapunzel would hear Gothel call to her, she would unfasten her braids, 
wind them around a hook by the window and let her hair fall all the way to the ground and the enchantress would climb up by it. After several years had passed, the king's son was riding through the forest one day when he came upon the tower. He heard a beautiful voice singing so sweet a song that he pulled his horse to a halt and listened. It was Rapunzel passing the time by letting her voice resound through the forest. The prince was so taken by it, he searched for a door to climb up to the girl in the window. He found none. He rode home, but returned the next day, and the next, and the next after that, and listened to the sound of Rapunzel's sweet voice. One day, as he listened by a nearby tree, Gothel appeared, and he heard her cry, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair! Rapunzel let down her braids, and the sorceress climbed up to her. If that is the way by which one may look upon her, then I shall try my fortune tomorrow, the prince told himself. And so the next day, the prince returned and stood at the bottom of the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, he cried. And before he could finish, the golden braids dropped before him and the prince climbed up to the window. Rapunzel was terrified, for she had never before seen anyone but Gothel. Madam, I, I did not mean to frighten you, he said, but I could not rest until I met the keeper of the most beautiful voice I have ever heard. But now I see it belongs to the most beautiful creature I have ever seen. You have heard me sing, she asked. Every day I come and stand under a nearby tree to hear you, he replied. What is your name, sir? Prince Henry, son of King Leopold, he told her. Rapunzel took a step toward him and looked upon his face. He was most handsome. The prince immediately fell to one knee. I ask you to be my wife. I cannot go on without you, he said, as he offered his hand to her. Rapunzel placed her delicate hand in his and told him, I will be your wife. The prince stood and held her, overjoyed. But I do not know how to get down. Perhaps you will bring some silk with you upon your next visit so that I may make a ladder from it, she told him. I shall bring a ladder ready made. I cannot wait another day until we are married. And with this, he placed a kiss upon Rapunzel's cheek and left. And after the prince had rode away, Gothel appeared and called to Rapunzel. The enchantress had brought a basket of peaches for her, and while the girl put them away, she forgot herself and told Gothel, You are much heavier to lift than the prince. Hearing this, Gothel flew into a rage. You wicked child! I kept you from the world, and yet you have deceived me! With this, Gothel gripped Rapunzel's hair and seized a pair of scissors. Rapunzel cried out as the sorceress cut off her golden locks. Gothel immediately banished Rapunzel to a faraway desert where she would never be found. Then she waited for the prince to come back and at dusk she heard, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Gothel let down the golden hair and the prince climbed up. When he saw Gothel before him, the prince demanded, What have you done with her? Gothel cackled. The beautiful creature which you seek is gone. <laughs> you shall never again see Rapunzel. The prince jumped from the tower and saved himself. But as he ran, the enchantress put a spell upon him, and the prince could no longer see. And with that, the prince was lost and left to forever roam the land in search of his beloved. For two years, 
He listened to the trees and to the wind, praying that they would carry her voice to him. But there was only silence. Until one day, he came upon the desert and heard a voice. He walked toward it and knew at once that he had found her. And suddenly the singing stopped. Rapunzel stood before the prince and took his hand. Is it a dream? he asked. No, she replied. And he knelt before her and she embraced him and they both wept. Her love for him was so strong that when her tears fell upon his eyes, they broke the spell. The prince could see once again. And he led her home to his kingdom where they were married. Gothel was never heard from again and Rapunzel and her prince lived happily ever after. The End And now it's time to take a deep breath and close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children.